this video, I'm going to show you how to do queue sorting analysis in Stata software using the queue factor package. So I've just got a sample of data set here. And the first thing I want to show you is how to set up the data set. So I'll go ahead and type browse. You can see it. What you want is you want a column that has stat no as a variable name. And this is the number from one to however many statements you have. So you see I had 59 statements here. And then you're going to have variable names that are your participants with whatever names you want to give those. So I have 32 participants here. And you'll see that for the first participant, you'll see they gave a negative one to statement one, a negative one to statement two, and so forth. So that's the way it needs to be organized. So your columns are your participants and your rows are your statement numbers. And then you want a column that's labeled statement, written just like that, lowercase statement, with the statements listed in them. So you should have one for each row. So this should all line up. Each participant has 59 statements that there's a value assigned to. There's 59 statements. And then this number lines up 1 to 59. So once that's set up, the thing you'll need to do is you'll need to install the Q Factor package. To do that, you just type in S install, hit enter. And I took mine off so I could show you what happens when you put it back in. And you'll see um, installing, installation complete. Okay. Now, if you want information on this package and what can be done, of course, you can just type help Q Factor and it'll pop up with information about the various options and so forth that you can use. All right. Now, this is a nice quick way to do a, um, a Q analysis. This software is really easy to use. Um, you type in Q factor, then you're just going to tell it which items to include as the participants, comma, number of factors, and then tell it how many factors you want. And you might experiment with a variety of number of factors. You're going to see data like eigenvalues when you run it. And so let's say I'm going to just tell it two at this particular time. And then you've got to tell it the rotation method that you're going to want. Okay, now this is the minimum you're typically going to want to put in there. There's other options that you can include as well. Um, by default, um, well, it allows you to choose the extraction method, and the options are principal factor, principal component factor, or iterated principal factor. And by default, it does the iterated principal factor. I can change that by using the extraction option. So let me just show you over here in the help file um, under extraction. So you could just put ext parentheses, whichever one of these three you want. So what I'm doing is a, is equivalent to having an ext from extraction parentheses ipf. Okay, so that's the um, that's how you do that if you want to change that. You can do any kind of rotation method that, that basically Stata will do. So you could put in the Promax or whatever you want. Um, there's also a way to use um, the specified promation, um, rotation method where you rotate around a particular matrix and it shows you how to do that in a help file. I've never done that. That's not something I, I know how to do. So I won't show you that here. But you'll see when I hit enter, you're going to get all all the information you would need for a basic Q sort just from doing this much. So I hit enter. Let me scroll up and show you everything you get here. The first thing you get is a summary, number of observations, okay, which is really the number of um, statements, okay, and a um, number of factors. You can see it is iterated principal factors. This is the unrotated solution. Um, first, and it gives you the eigenvalues if you want to look at those. And then it's going to give you the pattern matrix, which is basically your factor loadings, the unrotated solution. 
Now we'll go down to where it's rotated and that's where it gets a little more interesting. We're doing very max rotation here and you're going to see proportion of variance, okay, in those factors. And here we have the pattern matrix, okay, which is basically the loadings um, on each of the two factors. So person one, you can see loads on factor two, person two on factor one, and so forth. And this is where you just need to decide where your cutoff is. Um, I often use around 0.3. That's a, a common cutoff. Some people are usually more like 0.2. You need to look through and say, you know, here we've got a person who's loaded, you know, are they loaded on both factors? Would you say that they're loaded on the first positively and the second in the opposite direction or, or bipolar direction? Now, let me mention, um, while, while I'm mentioning bipolar, it does handle bipolar factors. So let's say this second factor um, you want this, these ones particularly here to be considered as um, bipolar loading on um, factor 2b essentially, you know, the, the second part of factor 2, but in the opposite direction. What you do is you, ba you tell it how many negative loadings there need to be in order for there, it to create a bipolar factor. And that's in the help file as well. It's just an additional option you can do. And here we have basically the summarized information of which Q sorts loaded on which factor with a loading. So those are those same um, loadings, but um, the ones that are, I believe the ones that are statistically significant is the one that ha are included here, otherwise they're not included. So you see that here I only have one negative one loading here. So if I told it I needed two or more negative to make this a bipolar factor, then it would not create one. Okay. So that just shows you which ones, which load on which one. Okay. It gives you the differences, um, allows you to start comparing now the factors. Here you see for each of the statements, the Z scores and then the, you know, val array value that equates to. Okay. Often we use these columns um, of information here. And then what's really nice here is that it creates for you tables of distinguishing statements and consensus statements for the factors. But these statements, and you can see this is going to be ordered, this is distinguishing statements for factor one, and it's showing here statement number, and it's got them ordered in size of the of the, the value here um, sorted by factor one. So these are what it considers um, distinguishing values for factor one and distinguishing statements for factor two in the next table and then the consensus statements. So that's those are tables that are nice to copy and paste and I generally will ed edit them down to the ones that I'm interested in depending on um, on the criteria. For example, I may be interested just in the consensus statements that are particularly high or low and not ones that are just in the middle. And so I may copy and paste this table and take out all the ones in the middle and just if they were a particular high or low. And over here, um, the same thing is true, the distinguishing statements. I may not be interested in, in you know, ones that are um, particularly, you know, are just in the middle.